quick one. Uh, before before yes. you start, uh, you didn't mention anything about honey. Is honey good? Honey is good. We said it earlier. I don't know. Uh, oh, we yeah, yeah. 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 Honey and brown sugar are supposed to be the best of the sugars if you have to have it. But uncle, I would suggest to you, if you can avoid it, please avoid it. You know, and if you have two spoons, maybe have one, and then tomorrow have half. You know, gradual reduction. I'm not saying that for feeling free, I don't do anything. No, whatever it is that you're doing, if you, if you have two sugar, two tables, uh, teaspoons in your tea, maybe tonight do one. Yeah? Tomorrow morning, try half. In the afternoon tea, maybe try a quarter. And then in the evening, try and see what, what you will do. Yeah, and see, whatever you can do to really help yourself is great. Every little helps, as Tesco says. So honey is good, but honey, you know, these days, there the, 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 are the, the lots of additives. The, you cannot be sure where, what you're getting. Yeah. So that's really up to you. If you want the honey, make sure it's natural honey. And natural honey, I'll leave it for you to find. <laughs> because, you know. And but I again, like I said, 21 days, trust, it. listen, it, it becomes a habit. If you start putting a little sugar in your tea, after 21 days, will stop it. you will stop. Because the body is very funny. It, it just adjusts to whatever you, you tell it to do. It, you know, then you are, end up having your tea with no, even no sugar. Because once you put sugar in it, after that 21 days, it, it becomes too sweet. You can't drink it. If you are the type that you have mom at home who is cooking or making you your teas just you know tell them if you have a mom like my mom who was who found everything my dad tried to do was offensive like you know don't put too much oil no and that kind of stuff just tell them it's health reasons and they might come along with you <coughs> don't go and start when what world war four yes you know gradually do it because yeah i saw it in my home my dad wanted to go on a healthy lifestyle my mom is a fancy she knows how to fry china and make gravy so she didn't like to now i would have to turn up not uh, she felt the old man doesn't want her food anymore but no the old man wanted to live longer that's all yeah anyway happy with diabetes i'm oh, sorry happy with blood pressure we're gonna go on to diabetes oh, okay so my name is angelina and i'm a midwife and a nurse and currently, um, um, I work as a diabetes professor in Hawaii, with the NHS. Um, so, what do we know about diabetes and what is diabetes? The name is actually, it's actually called diabetes mellitus. And it's two um, words, one from Greek, one from Latin. So the diabetes is actually Greek. And it means to siphon, that is to take out, to draw out. And mellitus is Latin. Latin meaning honey, sweet. So the meaning of diabetes is actually drawing out honey from somewhere. So where is this coming from? And what are the types of diabetes we have? The book tells us that it's a chronic disease. And we have types of diabetes. So we have type 1 and we have type 2. The type 1 diabetes is the one that normally is diagnosed from infancy. Because that one is actually um, diagnosed because the baby has got what we call autoimmune disorder. So something in the body, an organ in the body, is not working to produce the insulin. Right? We're going to watch a video, so this will all make sense in a minute. But the type 2 diabetes is progressive. It's actually something that, if you allow me to say, it's self-inflicted. Because it comes with age, again the lifestyle, where you come from, which we can't help that, but there's a lot we can do to minimize the effect of that, okay? So I think the next slide, this is the video that I want us to watch. And how do I get this cassette? Is that the TV thing? Again. Um, Yonick. Yeah. Mm, I, need, I need that video. Yeah, he's coming. He's, he's coming. Okay. So as I was let's let's use this diagram. So this is our stomach, right? This is this is this is if you just, as you sit down now, this is your stomach, that's your liver, this is pancreas. The little thing over here is called the beta cell. Pancreas is where your insulin is produced. 
And insulin is a hormone. The job of the insulin is to help the glucose that comes in your body to go around your body. So uncle, can you put this on for us to see please? So that I want to play it. But I can't get the cursor to get on there too. Race, where we come from have a lot to do with it. There are some countries that the prevalence of diabetes is very high. And one of the countries where we come from, Ghana, and the other South Saharan um, um, countries as well. Asia is also one of them. And I believe it's actually the way we, um, from our food, because a lot of our food is carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. I mean, a typical Ghanaian food or a typical Ghanaian home, you may have cocoa in the morning, have dokun in the afternoon, end up with fufu in the evening. That's three lots of carbohydrates for one day. So we'll come to that in a minute, and I'll talk more about that. And also age. As we get older, um, we become fatter, I would say. And raised BMI is one of the risk factors of getting diabetes. Um, also, there are no women here, so I'll skip that. I put it there, that is a woman thing, but I'm not going to mind that. Talk about that. So raised BMI, it says in the... Excuse me, say, you can tell us so if you get a woman. <laughs> fine, fine, fine. If you have a wife or a daughter who has a history of what we call polycystic ovary syndrome, then those category of women have risk factor of developing diabetes. So if you have a, a wife, a daughter, or a sister, a cousin that you've heard that she's got some of the problem. ovary problems, then the person has a risk factor of developing di uh, type 2 diabetes. So whatever it is, advice that you have heard from here, you can share with them. Yeah? Okay. Um, raise BMI. The risk check tells us that if you have BMI of 23 or more, you are at risk of developing type 2 diabetes. If your BMI is 27 or more, you are high risk. So really, I will, it's fair to suffer from the very young ones. We are all at risk. Mm -hmm. we, are, we, we are all at risk. But there are a lot we can do to reverse it. Type 2 diabetes is one thing that I want really for you to go home today. Know that even if you have it, it's reversible. But the, it, the onus is on you to reverse it. And it is doable. There are people that have done it and reversed it completely. Yeah? Okay. And also sedentary lifestyle. What do we mean by sedentary lifestyle? Especially those of us, our parents that have lived here longer and have retired and we don't do much. And you sit at home, you watch Jeremy Kyle to this and that all day. And then you get up, go to the kitchen, eat your cake, and come back. You are not doing anything. So sedentary lifestyle can also cause you to become fat. And being fat is risk for risk factor for diabetes. High calorie diet, the example I just gave, that carbohydrates. Our food is full of it. So today, we're going to portion and we go home with at least some tips of how to balance it all out. I'm not saying don't eat your kenke and ambese and all of that. They're all great, we all enjoy it. But how do we box it? How do we do it so that we can get the best out of it without be, be, becoming ill? Okay? All right. And also, one of the risk factors is high blood pressure. You see where blood pressure has come back? Because of the raised blood pressure, uh, because of the... Of, 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 the obesity, you can also have um, 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 diabetes, and blood pressure is one of them. Now, it says the people of black African origin, are, we have three times more, we are three times more likely to develop type 2 diabetes than our Caucasian um, um, counterparts. And in UK, 7% of all the population are living with diabetes at the moment, and the number is increasing. The number is increasing. Okay, so complications. Yeah, sorry. The yeah, one thing I didn't see there is, but which I think is a factor, is a big factor, is stress. Yeah. Yeah. Stress is everywhere, but we need to learn. And what you're doing here is actually great. You're, you guys are very lucky, actually. I don't know whose idea it was to start this kind of an organization. But it's a place where, A, you can come and, you know, socialize. You're not isolated. Even if it's how often do you meet? How often do you meet? Once a month? Yes, yeah. yeah. even if it's once a month, something to look forward to. Some people don't have anything. So you come over, you can see Uncle Bob here, Uncle John over there, have a chat, and hopefully you may have some colleagues that you can talk 
too about issues if you have it. So yeah, a bit of reassurance. Sometimes you, when you are all by yourself, you may have a situation you think you are the only one with a problem. But sometimes when you talk to your uncle over there, you think, then you hear his story, then, oh, okay, I'm quite cool, actually. I'm not that bad. Or mine is, you know. And all they can reassure you, all point you to a place where you can get help. Mm -hmm. No, no, I'm not talking about you. No, generally, generally, all of us, all of us. So you guys are very lucky. So make use of it. Um, it's a place to gather. It's a place to learn, share advice, and support each other. It's not just to come and have a cup of tea and go home. No, it's a place to really... You know, bond mm -hmm. and make it grow and bring your family along. Mm -hmm. Yeah, make it work mm -hmm. because it's a good thing. You have a room like this; it's warm. The facility is great. <laughs> it, it's not. It's not available everywhere, so don't take it for granted. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Okay. So, blindness is one of them, and we'll, we'll talk about that. Kidney failure, because the blindness. What happens with the blindness is that a high sugar in your blood will cover the back of the lens of your eyes and can lead to blindness. Kidney failure. If you remember the video, it says that the pancreas is what is supposed to produce the insulin. Insulin is a hormone. So what insulin does, the once you eat your ampicet in the morning, the ampicet is digested in your stomach, and the last thing that the body actually needs to work with is glucose. <clears throat> glucose is the end product of carbohydrates. So glucose cannot work by itself. So glucose needs a friend to walk around the body. So glucose best friend is insulin, and insulin is produced from the pancreas, and insulin is a hormone, right? With type 2 diabetes, the insulin is not being produced fully sometimes, or it's being produced, but it's not effective, it's not thick enough. So let's say the, you have to get 100% of the insulin to get to the arm cell like she was doing, you get about 60% of the insulin. Uh, sorry, glucose going to the arm. So you have forty percent of the glucose walking up, walking about the, uh, in your body, in the blood, not knowing what to do with it. So this is what we pick up when we do the test, and the accumulation of that is what leads you to lethargy, become tired. You know, you you you, you can't you can't do anything. You are you are weaning a lot. You are drinking a lot. Um, all of these, yeah, you're having all that's why all of these complications are signs that something is not right. So when you go to your GP, what they often do is that they'll do what they call, um, there's a blood test called HbA1c. And HbA1c is accumulation of uh, the glucose in your blood. So what they do, they do that blood test, and for you to be normal, your HbA1c has to be less than 6%. They calculate it in, in, in percentage. So if you have HbA1c of 5.9%, you haven't got diabetes. In this country, you should have 6.5% to for you to be diagnosed of having type 2 diabetes. In America, if you have 6%, they call it pre-diabetes. But here, we don't do the pre. But my advice to you is, don't wait for you to be told you've got pre or you've got it. Once you know that your HbA1c is maybe 5.8 or 5.9, try either maintain it by doing what you're doing, or increase something, or reduce something that you're doing, or what you have to do, try and bring it down. So either you maintain it, or you bring it down. And how do you do that? <coughs> As I said, diabetes' biggest enemy is carbohydrates. And carbohydrates are everywhere. We've got the food, we've got all the potatoes, the cassava, yeah. the, the plantain, the rice. The rice, let me go on, we eat, we eat a lot of rice, am I correct? Yes. yes. Right. And we love our jollof rice. Okay. You can, you see, if you, I'm not saying don't eat carbohydrates, but you have to have what we call the complex carbohydrates. What do I mean by that? Now when you go to the market, they have brown rice. And we have the white rice. But funny enough, basmati, I'm not advertising, but I'll tell you, white rice, basmati rice is known to have low glycemic index. So basmati rice has got low sugar as opposed to the other counterparts. Mm -hmm. But the best rice to go for is the whole grain ones. So look for the whole grain carbohydrates. Even in the mornings, instead of having, I don't know what you have, maybe uh, cornflakes with sugar, but try and have things like porridge. And porridge, look for the whole grain porridge. So now you have to be smart with what you buy in the shops 
You don't just go in the shops and unfortunately buy what is cheap or what's out there. You must look to see what you're buying. Because what you eat is what you become. And diabetes, as the video said, you can have diabetes for years and you wouldn't even know that you have it. And by the time it's diagnosed, often it's late. Right? And late meaning that you have become diabetic. So you need to take serious steps to reverse it. And it is reversible. There are people that have done a lot of things to, to reverse it. Okay? Um, so kidney failure is one of them. And then, you know, one of the complications that you can actually get from diabetes, apart from going blind, is amputation. Because what happens is that when you have wounds, they don't heal properly. They don't heal. And you are, you've got high risk of also having infections. You can have kidney failure from having recurrent UTIs. If you have persistent UTIs, urine infection, urine infection, it can cause your kidney to fail. That's long term. And some people are even, they go on the, you know, dialysis as a result of being diabetic. So diabetes, as it is, I call it a silent killer. It's so quiet, so you know you have it. By the time you know it, a lot of things have started to go wrong in your body. So you have to be very vigilant. And at this age, from age, I would say about 30, if you haven't started taking little steps to ensure that your health is at optimum level, I'm not saying run a marathon or go on you know, some cardboard diet. No. Eat but a pechinama. You can grill the fish these days. Yeah, you can grill it. You know, said if you like your kenke and fish, why not? But so it's a whole bowl of a bowl of kenke. Go half, and maybe with a tilapia, do two tilapia instead of one. Yeah, so you like your spinach and cucumber and your you know plantain. If you want to eat, if normally you eat four slices, maybe go for two, and add more more protein. So it's balancing your food, but reducing carbohydrates. If you reduce your carbohydrate intake with diabetes, you are a winner. You will win. Because you have to win with diabetes. You don't play with it. Okay? Um, yeah, the heart disease will lead to stroke. And the stroke amputation is one of them. Now, we have something we call di diabetes ketoacidosis. What do I mean by that? Remember when we watched the video, the lady said that at some point, the glucose becomes so high in your, in your blood that they don't know where else to go. When your sugars get so high in your blood, what happens is that they poison your blood. Your blood becomes acidic. If your blood becomes acidic, it's like the blood is poisoned. So let me make it quite simple. It's like, and we know the blood is the engine of the body. The blood, the oxygenated blood is what we need for everything that we are. As I'm talking to you sitting here, all that we need for us to be alive now is our blood, right? So if the blood becomes acidic, it means it becomes poisonous. It's like being thirsty and drinking dirty water. So I may have a, dirty, a cup of dirty water now because I'm very desperate and I'm, I'm thirsty. It won't harm me, right? But if I continue to drink that, how long will I have to live before I know that what I've done to my body is my, myself is wrong. So it's the same with diabetes and ketoacidosis. And it's quite fatal. So that's something that's why when you begin to have the symptom of lethargy, drinking a lot of water and wean, especially the men, when you wean a lot, when you cannot stop the car before you wean. Honestly, there are some men that when they are driving and they need to go, they need to go, they can't even hold it. That is a very, very important sign. Don't have a row with your wife, it's not your fault. Go and check it out. And if she tells you to check it out, check it out. Because not only is it affecting your we, there are other things that it can also affect. Your own performance, it can be affected. Yeah? So when we say to you, this is what we have observed, go check. We are not nagging you. We are not, I'm not your mother. But if we have some children down there, I have, I have, I have, a concern. I have your interest at heart. And often that's what there is to it. We may communicate in a wrong way because we are cross with you for something you did 15 years ago. But the message is still the same. So, so management of type 1, um, which you guys don't have, so I'll skip that. We're going to go for type 2, management of type 2 diabetes. So I've got diet, 
that is so everything. So everything. So I cannot emphasize it. And eat properly. Those of you that can, eat three square meals a day. Please do. There are a lot of us that we, most of us are rushing to work and we pick anything on the go, whatever. But even that, try that during the day. Try and put in something healthy, even if it's when you come home in the evening. And for the carbohydrates, my personal tip to you is that if you can, have your carbohydrates in the afternoon. Maybe by four, you've done carbohydrates. And then in the evenings, when, you're, when in your evening meals should be high protein and your vegetables. Vegetables, they are your friends. You can eat whatever you like, as many as you like. If you get peckish in the evening, go for high protein snacks. So you're looking at nuts. And fruits are good. But again, some fruits are very high in sugar, like your, uh, um, we have pineapple, we have sugar cane. I mean, we don't have sugar cane here, but pineapple we do have. We have mangoes here. Go for your berries. The berries are good. Natural yogurt. I know sometimes they are not, they don't sound masculine enough. You know, it's not like, why should a man like me sit in the evening and have a bowl of, uh, a bowl of um, you know, Greek yogurt with blueberry? I'm like, it's like a, a woman type of thing. But no, it's health, it's healthy. We health reasons why you're doing that. Health reasons why we're doing that. You can go on the internet and they will all be there. Oh, remember, I should be there always in there. Wasn't there. Yes. <laughs> That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, a pair of juna could yeah, be yeah, there. Yeah, no, but a juna could do my mm. next area. You've eaten that. I'm not saying you stop that. Eat that, but at the right time, so that the body can digest it digest all day it. long. Mm -hmm. Because you come home at 9 o'clock, depends on what kind of job you do. If you do what we do, we're never home until about half past 9, 10 o'clock. And you come home and you eat your yam and kotombre. The next thing you do, you're sitting now watching the 10 o'clock news and you're snoring and you sleep. That food you ate is sitting in your tummy. It hasn't done anything. In the morning, you thumbs up with some cooked breakfast. Then, I mean, as someone said, right? But the thing is that if you have your carbs in the afternoon, in the evening, even if you have a couple of, you know, uh, what do you call it? You know, you have some grilled chicken or grilled fish and some vegetables. That's a yet It's not that bad. Yeah? So you really have to be clever with it. Clever with it. And there's also, this is um, off, off, off track, but there are a lot of teas, like green teas and all of those things are all there. If you go to these Asian shops, ginger tea, that tea, th those ones are good. So instead of having four cups of your normal PG tips or Yorkshire tea. I'm a tea person, so to, to help me to de stop depriving myself and, you know, binging, I'll reduce it, maybe have two cups of my normal tea and have two cups of either green tea or ginger, something else. So you, you're sort of reducing it, balancing it out. You see, because the moment you say you're depriving, you're stopping, that's when your body wants it more. If you don't go home thinking I'm gonna go on a diet, no, you're not gonna go on any diet. You're still gonna go home and eat your banku, your fish, your kenke, your and we say your yam, whatever. But in moderation. Fufu is nice, we all like our fufu. But that whole thing is just pure carbs, nothing but carbs. Reduce the size, have more fish or meat with it. That's all, really, really, that's all you do. Okay? Exercise we said before. Exercise, just a little bit of walking, you know, instead of taking the bus, if you can walk, do. You know, if you are the type that have to pick children from school or have some grandchildren that you have to help around. When they, when they come from school, you can take them to the park over there. When they are on the slide, you can just walk around. As, you know, I don't know what you like to do, even if you like singing or pray. Whatever it is that you do, you know, many, something, just to get you out and about. Get you out and about. And little by little, every little, every little helps. Every little helps. So the lifestyle change, my sister mentioned it, smoking and alcohol. Smoking and alcohol is something that all around is not great. We're not here to preach to you, but if you can give it up, do. Get help and see what you can do with that, okay? Some people, you know, start off by reducing the amount they smoke and eventually they stop. We've had testimonies of that, or people have said that. Alcohol is the same, all right? Fizzy drinks, I know there are uh, Coke Zero and Fanta Zero and all that Zero stuff. I'm not a chemist. I don't know what's in there. But the jury is still out. Make your own decision. Is it good for you? Does it take sugar to me? 
If it tastes sugar, then what's in it? So, yeah. There are some things that you just have to be clever with it. And also, your HbA1c, the accumulation, at the moment, that even if you don't have the um, diabetes, it's important that you get this checked by you. Some GPs are offering it from age 40. They'll call you yearly HbA1c. And then we have it checked every year to ensure that you are not developing it or you have not, you know, got the risk, you know, you are not getting there. And whatever you do, try and, you know, ensure that you don't get that 6%. Try and be that under 6%. If you are under 6%, then you surely have not got diabetes at that particular time. Yearly retinal screening is something that the DPs also, also offer. And um, get your eye screen to ensure that you are not becoming blind. Um, because they, they, that can also start very subtly, you know. That can start very, very subtly without you knowing. And the next thing you know, you've got a full-blown, you know, um, 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 you've gone blind. Um, and just to know that that type 2 diabetes is reversible. I know that the book, some books will tell you it's a chronic disease. If they say it's a chronic disease, it means it cannot be cured. But type 2 diabetes, you got it yourself, you can get it. You can take it where it came from, so you can take it back. Yeah, because it's something that we, we came as a result of something that went wrong. So once you have resolved the cause of it, and with the type 2 diabetes, the cause of it is a pancreas not producing adequate insulin or strong enough insulin. So whatever you have to do to reverse that, then what you do, the steps you're taking, eating healthily, exercise, stopping smoking, all of that can help. If you have to be on medication, there are... Well, with the type 2 diabetes, the first treatment is again the diet, and there are a few tablets that what we normally start off with uh, what we call metformin. Metformin is a tablet. Um, it has its own you know, side effect like every medication, uh, but it's predominantly safe, and the GPs use it quite a bit. So sometimes that's all you need to help you with that. It's, um, sometimes you have to go on insulin. That is if you react to the metformin. Or with the use of the metformin, your blood, your blood sugars are also high. So, if you have diabetes, you have to learn to monitor your blood sugars. And that's the finger prick. Has anybody seen anybody doing that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So sometimes the GP will ask you to do maybe first thing in the morning and before you go to bed. So, to know that you are out of danger if you've got diabetes, for normal healthy adults, if you prick your finger in the morning, you put a little drop on that little strip, next time I'll bring some. On that strip, what we are looking for is the number should be between 4 and maybe 6 to 6.5. Try and get it under 7. 7 is normal, but try and get it under 7. Yeah? And it's the same for when you're going to, going to bed. If you persistently are getting above 7, especially first thing in the morning, let your GP know. Because there may be something that is not, especially when you're doing everything, you're exercising, you reduce your carbohydrates, you're doing all the things that you've been asked to do, and your sugars are still going up. You must get it checked. Go to your GP. Please, men, go to GP. They are there for all of us, okay? Go to GP. And whilst I'm at it, go have your prostate checked too, whilst I'm at it. All right? Go to your GP to, for them to check your prostate. Because some of you are sitting here with that. You know, the prostate gland enlarging and you haven't even told your own wife or whoever you live with. You know, you must get take your health seriously. You are not immortal. I mean I'll be I'll be I'll be I'll be, I'll be frank with you. Um, you're quite stubborn when it comes to health. So take it seriously. Yes sir. What are the symptoms of prostate problems? Okay. <laughs> that one we in a lot, not emptying your bladder. And you realize that you feel like you want to go to you want to pee all the time. So that could be either diabetes or prostate. So whenever a man feels like weed all the time, you go to the bathroom at six times, especially in the night. You're getting up more than four times. I would even say three. And you weed just a little. And you're not you feel like you're not emptying your bladder. Get to check. And also if there is any pain when you're weeding passing urine, if, there's, if you feel any pain, because the prostate is a gland, they sit between, um, they sit between your, your glands, so it's on the side, it's like a balloon, so what it does is that, if it's enlarged now, it squeezes the urine tract, so it constricts, and see the urine is not able to flow, you know, 
you get a lot of urine retention and a lot of urine retention and that can cause abdominal you also pain. abdominal pain and UTIs again mm. urine tract infection yeah. okay so if you win a lot win a lot that is so important win a lot win a lot if you don't take anything at home today remember if you think at night you're not sleeping because you're winning a lot and your wife is asking you, why are you getting up four or five times? Oh, leave me alone now because you don't bother me. No, he has to, she has your interest at heart. Go to your GP, tell the GP, I'm winning a lot. Let the GP do the test and say, well, everything is fine. Yeah? No, it's free. You may have to sit for an hour or two, but it's better than not getting a check before you know it becomes something that, you know. Okay? So. Diabetes time 2 is very reversible and we can reverse it. Thank you very much. Any questions, please? Any questions? No questions? Yeah? Give them time to digest it. Give them time to digest it. You give them food for talk. Oh, uh, they want five minutes to digest it. <laughs> And you know it, like you said, <coughs> men don't like going to the It's very room. true. <laughs> For the first time, you've hit the nail on the head. Oh, yeah. And we all... Digest you're digesting that. Okay, okay, okay. 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 Concentration. Okay. So did you say whole grain? Whole yeah. grain is, is the best, like yeah. brown rice, yeah. oats, wholemeal bread, wholemeal bread, yeah. Oh, it's especially the seeded bread. If you're buying bread, buy the one with some seeds in it. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 good. Um, yes, uh, is this a comment maybe with a question? Yeah. I mean, I remember you talk about you know waistline. Yeah. Uh, this last. Uh, I can say this week, I was listening to Radio Radio 4, and they talk about, uh, they carry out some study at uh, Bradford. What? Bradford. Bradford. Oh, Bradford, yeah, yeah. And they talk about, especially South Asians. Yes. 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 That they, most of them have type 2 diabetes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they talk about how they were born, some of them, they were born with, uh, you know. Abdul yeah. yeah. Uh, in fact, I was shocked to hear that one of the, you know, the youngest they have tested with type 2 diabetes was 10 years old. That was type 1. They, uh, believe me, type 2. They said type 2? Yes. Okay. The youngest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Something, I made something went wrong. I, I, yeah. I've had it clear. There's a lot of tests. There's yeah. a lot of research going on yeah. um, with diabetes. So yeah. to know how we can manage it, how we can prevent it, and how best we can really help people with it. With, because it's, it's rampant. It's everywhere. Yeah. It's everywhere. Yeah. And, you know, what puzzles me, I have seen people with a massive weight, for some reason, they have no diabetes. How do, how do you know that? It's a sign well, some of them, I, I do ask. Have they had the blood test? I, well, I don't know, well, but some of them, so I, I, I do wonder, what, 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 maybe, is it, uh, I, 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 I know that you actually said there's an inherited, uh, inherited. Yeah. Uh, they can be inherited. Yeah. 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 There's, there's no, no, yeah. Yeah. But also, let's be a man. Let's be a man. Yeah. Yeah. It will catch up with you. Oh, catch yeah. Up. That's yeah. what it is because yeah. it's a silent killer. Yes. So yeah. when you see your abdominal get increasing gradually, you will you will need to do something about that. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Um, yeah. So, oh yeah. yeah, of course. You know, um, if one has uh, cholesterol, I mean, don't they prescribe the tablet which enables a person to, I mean, to relate to that? Uh, to, uh, Oh yeah, there is, there is, there is, there is medication. Yeah, there is a statin. Sorry? Sorry? I mean, the person has got the high blood pressure, and it's a cholesterol. Yeah. No, I, is there a tablet that they prescribe to them which makes them urinate a lot also? Yeah, 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 bendrofuzide. Some of the blood pressure tablets, yeah, when you take it, makes you pass urine. But you would know that, um, you know, that passing of you, when the diabetes has established. Okay, person, so you can continue, as compared to, you know, if you have a tablet, you've got the cholesterol, then you have to be taking a tablet. So you're it, let, let me let me no. understand what you're saying. You're asking yeah. that people with cholesterol who are on simvastatin, yes. 
can have res um, 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 side effects of past urine. They will urinate. They will put the water in the mouth. It's, it's not that. If, if people with blood pressure, they give them a medication called um, yeah, yeah, antidiuretic, yeah. and some of them, as the, some the people call it water tablets. Mm, yeah. Because what happens with blood, made, what happens with blood pressure is that you retain fluid. Blood pressure if it's not controlled. What you do, you retain, you retain fluid. And one of the things that causes retention of fluid is high sodium, and sodium is the salt. Source. That is why when you've got blood pressure, it's so important that you stop you eating salt or reduce it. If you reduce your salt intake, it will help with the management of your blood pressure. Because sodium causes water retention. Um, my question is based on an experience uh, relation. Okay. Uh, the person is not alive. He had uh, two diabetes, uh, which was very serious as a result of lifestyle. Yep. Lifestyle because uh, when I knew him, a cup of tea, he would take about four teaspoons, uh, no, small teaspoons of uh, this thing. But in the end, he was diagnosed to have something which doctors over here and even in Ghana, when he went to Coco Clinic, as hypothyroidism. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, I don't know what might have caused that, that hypothyroidism. Mm -hmm. But uh, he was on that until he passed on in Ghana. Was he? What actually caused that hypothyroidism? I don't know. I can't tell whether it was diabetic which killed him, or hypothyroidism. That is my question, number one. Uh, secondly, uh, there are occasions when one takes a lot of water. Yeah. One urinates a lot, in fact, one goes to this thing. Yeah. In fact, there was a time another friend of mine also was experiencing that. Yeah. So I suggested that he should go to his GP, mm -hmm. but the constant uh, use urinating really uh, made us to be sure that he might have either uh, enlargement of the prostate right. or this thing. But in the end, he was found to be free. So what actually brings about this constant this thing? He, he, he had checked that on two occasions and he was found to be free, nothing. No prostate enlargement, no diabetes. What brings about such irregularities as far as we, 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 or urinating often is concerned. In particular, these two questions. The first one, which develop hypothyroidism, and then the second one, the constant use of uh, urination. Then I have also another third question. <laughs> what, <laughs> yes, what, what brings about the amputation of one's you know, leg, leg. leg and whatnot when one has got serious diabetes, particularly the type 2, because I knew of a nephew who passed on in Ghana about a year ago. He was amputated, you know, something happened to him. Then um, he passed on. So if you could give me answers to these three questions, okay. I would be very grateful. All right, let's start from number one. Number one, you wanted to know whether it was the hypothyroidism that killed your friend or the diabetes that killed your friend. Precisely. Okay. Those two are what we call endocrine. They all come under um, an organ called endocrine, right? So if you have an endocrine disorder, you can have diabetes, you can have either hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism. Right, hypothyroidism means that your thyroid gland, which produces iron and all of that, is not working effectively. That has its own risk factors. I would, I don't know, but I would be very surprised if it's the hypothyroidism that killed your friend. I would like to think it's yeah. probably is the yeah, right. is the diabetes. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, at Kolebu, you were seeing Dr. Fisher, an endocrinologist yeah. at Kolebu, who is now at reach. You are perfectly right, madam. Thank you very much for that. Okay. And number two, you wanted to know about the remind me the, the, the frequency of urination, yeah. and she, the person was free. Yeah. Now. 
that is a risk factor. That's a symptom. One of the sorry, that's a risk factor. That's a symptom, I should say. So if you have the symptom and you go and check and there's nothing there, there's nothing there. That's great. So we don't know what's causing it, but so long as you've had the test and everything is fine, then okay. But if you have the test and you continue and you're now losing weight and you're having blood vision, because you don't take the risk factors in isolation. Sometimes one or two together or one and one and a half. You may have a bit of that, a bit of that, a bit of that. So if the person is weighing a lot, losing weight, that might be a factor. And also, um, they may not say that they're having, you know, uh, you know, genital itching. Mm. That's a sign of thrush. Or they have a, a wound that is not healing. The, the person has got to come back from Ghana, got a little mosquito bite. Now this mosquito bite is not healing. It's becoming mm. something else. Mm. That You have to put all of that in the basket and see what happens. Persistent testing. And the, the third one is the amputation. The amputation is caused by your nerve endings, you know, all our, all our body, we've got veins everywhere, and the nerve endings. When you have diabetes and it's so bad, your nerve endings all clogs up. So when it clogs up, the body's not flowing there. So what actually happens is that it begins by your, your legs becoming numb, whatever it's affecting becoming numb. It becomes numb so much that you don't even feel it. So it's when they don't feel their legs, it, it, it becomes what we call necrotic. So when it's necrotic, then they have to cut it off. Or you have had a wound, ulcer, some type of wound that's not healing. And if the wound don't heal, they can eat into the body and your skin, go into the bone even. So that they have to amputate it. That's, that's one of the really worst case, worst case, worst case. So I just want to add as well, because we did talk about the blood pressure as well. Remember we said the heart needs to pump the blood to the other organs of the body. So if there is lack of oxygen, the blood carries oxygen. If so wherever if there is a lack of perfusion, which is lack of blood flow to the particular area, it becomes the heart. That's what she's trying to. So it's very important. They work hand in hand. Blood pressure and diabetes are like brothers and sisters. You have one, you have you can have the other. <laughs> yeah. Something cool that hypo I can't pronounce it. Hyper hyperphonous gland. The major gland in the body. Oh, hypothalamus. That's true. Okay, this is now we are talking about biology. I'm not a biologist, so I would not pretend that. We specialize in other areas now, but I know I know hypothalamus is to do with regulation of the body temperature. Yeah, that's all I can say about that. I am not, you know. I'm a biologist, I'm a midwife. No, no, I guess, I guess, oh, it's maybe what about understand. No, 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 no. It's the, that, that, that is what you, that is what helps you to regulate your body temperature. temperature. Yeah. Um, what the real cause, uh, they call it hypoglycemia. 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 Okay, all right. Yeah. Hypoglycemia is when your blood sugar is less than four. Yeah. We say four, less than four, you're on the floor. Mm -hmm. Because if it's hypo, it means the, the, what is this, is that the blood glucose in your body is going down. Mm -hmm. Everything we have to have, with the, with the diabetes, mm -hmm. there is an optimum harmony that the body will work. Mm -hmm. And normally what we say is that if, you do, if your blood um, sugar is between 4 and 7, for even if you've got type 2 diabetes, it's fine. So if you get it 4 to 6.5, I would say, to get a safe sign, mm -hmm. it's good. But if it's below four, mm -hmm. then you've got hypothyroidism. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia, hypoglycemia can lead you into a coma. So you must treat it. And it's, that is easy to treat. If you have a diet, you have diabetes, or anyone with diabetes, and they do their blood sugar is less than four, give them something to drink. Yeah. Or eat. You know, liquid or bread or something like that. And then that will bring their blood sugar. And then check in 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. So check in 10 minutes, every 10 minutes, mm -hmm. until it stabilizes. Mm -hmm. If they are beginning to feel unwell, stabilize them, call an ambulance and take them to the hospital mm -hmm. and they'll treat them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hyper, if you, do a, if you do your blood sugar, if you have got diabetes type 2 mm -hmm. and you are not on any medication mm -hmm. and you have your blood sugar, it's more than, sub, uh, more than <coughs> 7 or 8, anything above 8 and 9, mm -hmm. If you become symptomatic with it, when we say symptomatic, it's like you, you, are, you become a bit disoriented, you're dizzy, you're not feeling well, call your GP and go to be seen. Uh, go to A&E, rather. Go to A&E. It's an emergency. Go to A&E to be seen. OK? 
Okay? So we have hypo and we have hyper. Hypo. Okay? Yes, sir. I want to point out after urinating here, then realize that you are having some dripping again. After yeah. I finish urinating, yeah. sitting down in less than a few seconds, yeah. you stop dripping again. Yeah. Yeah. What's the cause of that? That can also be, again, diabetes or prostate, enlarged prostate. So they all need to be checked out. Yeah? Because when you when you pass urine, you should start and finish. Yes. Yeah. And when you finish, you finish. So if you think you're still dripping and it carries on, you know, and you're having wet patches, I mean, you're, you're all like, you're like our fathers and brothers, so we can be okay. Um, you're having wet patches, because when it comes to our clinic, we ask you all of this anyway. Um, um, you're having wet patches. And one of the things that I often ask the men is that when you want to pass in, how urgent is urgent? And then it was, no, sister, this is here, I mean, to make glasses, yeah. And sometimes you, you have a little bit of accident. Don't keep it. Right, yes. Go quickly and get it checked out. It can be reversed. Type 2 diabetes is so reversible. So don't let it become any major issue. It is reversible. Okay. Yes, sir. Madam, you advise us to get rid of the uh, Carbohydrate as much as possible. Don't get rape, reduce. You need carbohydrate for energy. And uh, the intake of sugar also yes. should be minimal. Yes. But there are times when we are depending on the vegetables, we don't get satisfied. Yeah. We <laughs> eat a lot of vegetables, we get up. After a short while, yes, you, you become hungry. Yeah. Yeah. And then you feel like eating. I mean, you want some food too. We want, you know, the, no, more, the bigger the size of the kinky or the fufu. <laughs> it fills the gap. Uh -huh. <laughs> you no, know, see, what you, you, what you have to remember is that what is the purpose of what I'm doing? That's actually your responsibility. Okay? Um, with the carbohydrates, uh, sweet, sweet potatoes, funny yes. enough, you can have that. Sweet potato. Yes. Sweet potato. You can have that. You can have sweet potato. You can actually put it in the oven, and in the evenings when your sister feeling peckish, that's a nice thing to have to nibble on. Sweet potato is fine. You can chop it and put it in the oven, and like a, your your you can have your hummus or something with it. Yeah, that's that's that's, that's great. That, that will fill you up. Yeah. But you Why must you must. I mean, you can have you can even have chocolate. Dark chocolate is fine. Chocolate. But not a bar of chocolate every day. A little bit of a little bit of sugar. A little bit of um, um, dark chocolate once once a while is okay. You know we have to live. I understand we have to live. But again we just have to be clever. Everything in moderation. Especially if you have not been diagnosed with it, begin to take steps to reduce it so that you don't get the diagnosis. Really, that's all. Um, yes, sir. Uh, I recently tried to, you know, just cut on what, uh, of certain food that I eat. So I decided maybe sometime to get some soup. Soup, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you call soup here? I, I, when I came here, that's what I was, I was shocked to see what they call soup here. That's not what we call soup at home. But I decided to try it. But to my shock, I realized that some of those soups there, that they add sugar yes. into it. And even the baked beans. Yes. That are, baked beans, tomato ketchup, sugar. Is full of sugar. Ah, ah, sugar. Mm -hmm. yeah. Baked beans, tomato ketchup is full of sugar. Mm. If you see, to, to be successful with the management of diabetes, you have to often do a lot of the things yourself. Yeah. A lot of the shop bought stuff have got hidden sugar in it. Yeah. They may not call it sugar, they may call it something, but at the end of the day, it's sugar. So, um, Hopefully most of you have got mom at home who can do the cooking or whatever. <laughs> if you have mom at home, or if you have mom at home, just be gentle and let let her help you with the let her help you with the change. If you're doing it yourself, that's even easier. Then you can do your own shopping and buy what you need. But just go little by little. Not I'm not saying we're not saying go home and not stop it. You should just stop it. No 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 no. Far be it. No. Just tonight if you have to have half a spoon of. Uh, sugar in your tea, that's a change right there. Mm -hmm. If you had, you know, whiskey every night before you go to bed and tonight you don't have it, that's a change right there. 
if you had two packets of, I don't know what I'm saying. Do you, anybody smoke here? Can I, can I say? It? Okay, you guys don't smoke. That's fine. Oh yes, you can. can say okay. It. <laughs> so if you if you smoke four cigarettes at night in the evening before you sleep, and today you, you do use two, that's a change right there. <coughs> so gradually, because nobody, you, it, you can't do it. If you go in fully, you you you, you, you give up. In a, you won't last a day. You won't last a day. So just go slowly. Yeah, those of you that work, your pack lunch, try and make it yourself. You know, eggs in the morning is great, so boil some eggs. Boil some eggs. You can have two eggs. You can have two eggs. Yeah. Have some wholemeal, you know, bread with some salad. Yeah? Yes, sir. Throughout your deliberation. Yeah. Maybe machine something of protein like let's say red meat and yeah. others yeah. fish red meat chicken yeah. what are those uh, you know proteins that one should avoid in order to avoid avoid yeah, in order all to... proteins are good for um, diabetes you can eat whatever you like but we know that red meat, red meat. has its own issues okay. i don't have the full fat so i will not go into it because I, I don't have the full evidence with me, but I do know there's a lot of um, 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 talk about minimizing our red red, red meat, especially pork. I don't. I mean, you guys don't know. Yeah, so that one is out of yeah, yeah. out of bounds. Yeah, you guys don't do that. So yeah, but red meat reduce. I'm not saying don't eat it. It reduce it. The one that is good for us actually that I think is good is aponchinam. Aponchinam apparently is better than the the, the cow. Yeah, aponchinam is better because it's mainly lean. Good. It's lean. Aponchinam is lean. And I think they are red in a better environment, and they're led to believe because there's not a lot of them. So they, they are, they are, their care is easier, and they like, rather than them, you know. Mm -hmm. And you don't inject, you don't tend to inject them with enough. They don't. Yes. 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 So protein, yeah, chicken is good. Grilled chicken, grilled fish, um, beans, your mung beans, your um, lentils, red beans. Our red, our normal black eye, you know, black eye peas, fantastic. Do your, you know, bean stew, put some in your spinach stew, add some market sweat to it, and you're on your way. Oatmeal. Yeah, have your oatmeal in the morning. Oatmeal in the morning. Uh, maize is a good grain to have, so porridge, but a small amount of porridge. And another thing you could do is that put some nuts in your porridge. Try it. Nuts. Yeah. Try it. I like cashew nuts. Yes, I was going to say use that. When you make porridge, instead of putting sugar, put the cashew, yeah, put cashew. The cashew nuts in. And the rye bread. Cashew yes. Cashew and when you want um, rye bread, rye bread, R-Y-E, rye bread. The real rye bread is very dark and thick. Mm. And it's, it's a little bit pricey, but it's about the size and it's already sliced. That is a real one. Tesco's has fresh ones. They're nicer, but they're not the real deal. But the real deal is dark and it's heavy. And that one is good for your breakfast. Those of you that you know have to go to work, you can make that in your sandwich. Put a lot of nice things that you want in it. Because it's, uh, that is a complex carbohydrate. It takes longer to digest. It keeps you fuller for longer. Because when you have the white, one thing you must avoid before, like, nothing else, do not buy white bread again. <laughs> So no, no, no more white bread from today. Don't buy white bread. Um, no meal bread. No meal. Try all meal. What about, uh, you know, we talk about porridge. What about the preparation of it? Because she yeah, you said some people when they're going to prepare this kind of porridge, they have to drink a lot of milk. They have to. Uh, you can use water. Yeah. Yeah, you can use water. I, I, I use water in my porridge. Uh, I've got I've got just a brief announcement to make. Okay. Uh, there's a sister that's brought her some food. She's brought her some rice, chicken, and a salad. And it looks as if this conversation is still going on. And we've only got the whole book till 8 p.m. Mm. So what I'm going to suggest is that please join oh. us. What I'm going to suggest is that we could still ask questions, but maybe we should serve the food at the same time mm. because we've only got the whole book till 8 p.m. So people could be eating, and if you, uh, there are any more questions, fire them away. Otherwise, we might get to a stage where 
we might overstep the mark, we might go past our time. So maybe we'll get the food together. If anybody got questions, they could still ask the questions whilst we still eat alongside. Yeah? Yeah, go ahead. Unless we finish, you don't have any more questions, right? Well, this is one suggestion that we could still have the point for you. Only for you. Okay, they have questions. Only for you. Carry on and do this.